Hello and good evening from the UK. My name is Elisa and uh, today I want to give you um, seven strategies, seven effective strategies that if you are creative, they will help you build resilience. Now, um, why is this necessary at the moment? It's pretty obvious. Uh, we are really in a time that is very very challenging for a lot of us and sometimes in extreme ways uh, for those of you who have been in lockdown for a long time uh, for example in the uk we've been in scotland we've been in a sort of lockdown for quite a while uh, we some of us may experience uh, under stimulation we may be forced to stay at home and if you are one of those people and you are a creative, maybe a musician that is used to going to gigs and, uh, and, and mill around and make, mix and mingle with everybody else. Well, this can be pretty hard. You know, the days can seem very, uh, very much the same every day and it can be difficult to be creative uh, for this reason. Uh, on the other hand, it may be that you're uh, overstimulated. You know, maybe you've taken on a side job, or something that maybe you're not that interested in, or maybe it's a job that's quite stressful. And that can also be very difficult for creativity because you, if you're under stress, you're not going to be relaxed enough to create. Now, uh, my name, if you don't know who I am, is Elisa, and I am a performer, a writer, and a coach for creatives. And what I do is, uh, among other things, is to help people grow into their journey of uh, self-expression so that they can share their gifts and, and shine their own unique light on the world. That's something I really believe in. Now, why is resilience important in this particular moment, especially, is that, you know, life isn't always giving you what you want. And in this uh, period it's really not giving us as a, a species what we want life is not perfect and if we expect it to always go our way to always give us what we want and then we get disappointed when that doesn't happen and we don't bounce back and we don't learn and grow well we definitely cannot be creative let alone be happy and of course, it's not about being happy all the time, but it's about being able to navigate difficulties, right? So I was thinking today, you know, what can we actually do about this? And um, I want to give you seven strategies that uh, are science backed. Oh, here's my cat in space. If you're on Facebook, that's very, very fun. <laughs> if you're on Instagram, you're not going to be able to see it. Anyway, I'm going to leave that in the video because it's too funny. So the magic cat is going to tell us um, the first way to build resilience is acceptance. So acceptance is when you accept what you're feeling. Uh, this doesn't mean that you just give in into what you're feeling. It just means that you acknowledge what you're feeling and this reduces the emotional uh, charge and comes the amygdala, which is the alarm center of the brain, so to speak, that's involved in the processing of uh, emotions, especially fear and anxiety. So what you want to do is, you know, identify and accept your emotions and then move on, which is the opposite of what most of us do. Uh, most of us either really hold on to emotions, or a particular negative emotion and obsess over it, or we avoid it, right? But those two techniques don't work. We might even judge ourselves for feeling a particular way and think, well, I shouldn't feel this way. But if you do that, you add insult to injury. You're gonna feel worse because not only you're feeling what you're feeling in, in, in this moment, you can't change it, um, but then you're making it worse. And what you really wanna do instead is kind of think of it as a river that's passing all the time. And you are the observer watching the water pass. You know, the river is always changing and so is life. Nothing positive or negative lasts forever. This too shall pass. So just see if you can accept what you're feeling right now. The second uh, strategy, um, 
has got to do with oh it's that's not the second strategy <laughs> second strategy is to reframe so what does that mean um when we are in a particular situation, we usually uh, describe it to ourselves using language in our own minds, right? Or even the way we talk about a specific situation to a friend. And if we say, oh my God, I'm so stressful, this is a nightmare, it's a total disaster, then you are framing the situation, making it worse, right? Because you are framing it in this really negative light in which you have no power to change it. But one good thing that you can do, one way that you can help yourself is first of all, reframe the language you use and just ask yourself, well, is this really the end of the world or is it simply a bit annoying? Is it a bit uncomfortable? You know, and when you see it that way, well, it's much better than a disaster, right? It's annoying. It's not a disaster. It's a bit uncomfortable, but you can cope. You can manage it. And if you're a performer, you probably have uh, used this sort of technique without even realizing. You know, if you're a performer, you may be used to reframing your nerves as excitement. And then you go on stage and there you go. You use that adrenaline in a positive way. So you can change your mindset. And one of the ways in which this can be done with stress is to see it as a challenge. You know, it is a challenge, not a threat. And a tip that helps me um, is to remember that, you know, there have been other times in life when things haven't gone your way. Maybe there's been an abrupt change. You know, maybe you've moved home or uh, gone, to, gone to another school or whatever it may be, right? And to think about that time and think, well, what helped me then? You know, what pushed me through? Uh, what are the skills, the strengths that you called upon at that time, at that challenging time? Tell yourself that story. Remember that story of resilience. And one of my favorite uh, quotes about this is a quote by Elizabeth Edwards that says, she stood in the storm and when the wind did not blow her away, she adjusted her sails. Pretty cool, right? It's sort of a version of when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Um, the third strategy is to set achievable goals. You know, it's important to set achievable goals. So what that means is you think about what you'd really like, first of all, and think about the benefits. You know, why do you want this? What benefits are going to are you going to experience once you actually get this? It's important to actually think of the benefits, yeah, as if you already have this thing in your life, not because of some kind of magic, but because you want to connect to the emotion, the positive emotion that gets generated when you think about this thing becoming true. Because that's going to fuel your motivation. It's going to make you want to do this. But that's only in step number one. Then what you need to do is to chunk the goal down. You need to chunk it down to small tasks, to small daily tasks that you can succeed at. Because it's all about the dopamine. Remember, you know, the, the people that are creating things like Instagram or Facebook, they know all about the dopamine. You know, it's all about gamifying things, making things achievable, giving yourself a reward every time you achieve that goal. If you make it into a daily task, you are a lot more likely to actually achieve the bigger goal. Because, you know, it's a brick, another brick, another brick. Rome wasn't built in a day, but it was built over time. And when you make progress and you feel good, you then are more likely to have more progress. You know, progress leads to more progress, right? So it's uh, what I would say is establish a daily routine that starts with just one small task. You know, don't overwhelm yourself with a thousand little things. You know, we tend to just dream big and want to change all at once. Don't do that because then you won't do anything. <laughs> you know, it's going to be too overwhelming. But if you just think about one little task that you can do every day, 
it's an enjoyable activity set yourself up for winning then you can maintain that good feeling throughout the day you can also influence other people around you and then that's a positive feedback loop you know the people will around you will also give you that back give that back that positive emotion okay um the next thing the next strategy is around breathing now slow diaphragmatic breathing that means breathing through your nose only mouth closed and breathing in for four seconds resting for a couple of seconds breathing out for eight seconds or more and then stopping for a couple of seconds so four two eight two so breathing in four stopping for two breathing out eight stopping for two and repeating these for a few minutes i would suggest five minutes especially if you're prone to anxiety um, this will actually deactivate the fight or flight response um, and actually activate your parasympathetic nervous system uh, activate the rest response so to speak okay so when you are breathing fast you are actually you know when you're stressed you're breathing fast and that activates the uh, fight or flight response it increases your anxiety it makes you panic you know so one easy easy way to influence your body to uh, actually calm down is to use this short this this exercise where you're breathing uh, really uh, slow while you're breathing out and it's got to do with the amount of oxygen that goes into your body you know we're not going to go into the details because we don't have enough time but trust me this really works but you do need to do it for five minutes especially if you're prone to panic attacks and stuff like that okay and we've come to number five which is about training your body so what this means is that you know to train to change state you need to train your attention your focus you need to train your language the way you speak to yourself and others and you need to train your body and so you need to, to take care of being like train your body like a like an athlete you know um, unless that's what you're into but what i mean is taking care of your physical health is going to be the first step in managing stress and in building the resilience because you know we are the mind and the body is they they, they are not actually two things you know it's all interconnected so the three things are pretty obvious you probably heard this before but sometimes we just need to be reminded don't we because it's easy to forget is that we need good quality sleep we need a healthy diet and we need regular exercise now at the moment because we're not really allowed to go out and you know if you're into the gym i mean i'm not into the gym but if you're into the gym you're definitely you know in some places you're not allowed to go to the gym and th there are so many um stressors at the moment that you know means that we have to stay inside or or maybe you, we just are shielding or something like that so what I, I suggest is to start with exercise make it fun you know don't think of exercises like this thing that you have to do because if you think like that your brain isn't going to help you it's going to think of it as a negative thing and you're not going to be motivated to do it it's going to work against you so see it as, as uh, fun like how could you make exercise fun you know i know that for myself one of the things that really works especially in the morning is to put on a dance track and you know i like to just dance different music every day and get my heart pumping and move my body and just feel like yes i have a body you know i'm not just a floating head i'm connected to this body so dance can be really good but you know maybe for you it could be yoga maybe for you it could be something else but there's so many youtube videos you know there's not really no excuse to not do it and once you have exercise happening in everyday life as long as you don't do it late at night um, that can help you sleep really well and of course eating well plenty of vegetables you know like the doctor says yes it's the way to go um, and definitely you know if something doesn't go off it's not something you should eat because it's something that doesn't go off well it's not very normal is it very natural natural things go off so it's probably processed food not good for you right let's move on 
Um, the next uh, thing, that, the next strategy uh, to build resilience is to pay attention, which is also called mindfulness. You know, what mindfulness is, is simply a, a uh, basic human ability to be fully present right now, right here. You know, I could be thinking right now, oh, what am I saying? What are they thinking? Am I saying the right thing? That's not being in the present. That's kind of judging my own experience, right? Instead, being in the present is like being fully aware. Okay, I'm fully aware maybe that I'm thinking these things. I'm not right now, but I could be. I'm fully aware of what my body feels, you know, how am I breathing? How am I feeling? What am I doing? You know, am I really here or am I somewhere else imagining something you know it's about being fully present fully aware of what you're feeling and what you're experiencing in this moment and also because of that um, managing to choose your responses to other people and events so instead of, of being reactive and just automatically responding to things the way that you always do without any conscious thought you are actually taking a moment and choosing your response. That's what mindfulness is about. When you're bring, bringing um, your awareness to what you are uh, experiencing via your senses, your eyes, your ears, you know, um, your state of mind, your emotions, you're being mindful. That's what it means. And of course, meditation can help, guided visualization, self-hypnosis, all of these things, yoga can help uh, sometimes because they focus a lot on the breath and the breath is only in the present moment you know right now if you're alive well you have everything you need right now there's no existential threat on you know happening in this particular moment okay so focusing on the breath is a a good way a really easy way to become fully present in the moment and de-stress and remember the diaphragmatic breathing, which if you do at the same time, helps really quite a lot. Um, there are loads of uh, online resources available on guided meditation. I've got a bunch of guided meditations on my YouTube channel, so feel free to go there. Um, and there's plenty more all over the internet. Okay, finally, of the seventh strategy uh, to be resilience is journaling so journaling um, doesn't mean that you're paying loads of attention to how you're writing what you're writing it just kind of means free writing you know just writing emptying your mind writing whatever comes to mind without worrying about grammar or structure of the sentence because no one's gonna read it except you and it's about allowing what's happening in your mind to actually exit be on the paper and when it's on the paper it's a lot easier to have perspective you know to keep perspective it's black and white uh, you know it's black ink on the paper you can see it and this can really help um, not only improve your mood and uh, give you a, a better sense of overall mo emotional control because you're aware so you can choose your reactions and you can choose whether to believe something or not um, journaling can help you sort out your mind between you know things you can control things you can't control things that you you choose to accept things that you choose to let go and it helps you become more aware of what you're actually feeling and thinking and and it can really help manage your you know personal adversity uh, and and emphasizing uh, important patterns and growth in life. Now those are the seven strategies, but I do have one bonus one that's especially good for creative people. And the idea is to simply create. Create, but not for business, not to sell anything, n just for fun, just for fun. You know, just doing something silly, something that doesn't have any meaning, something that you're going to not show nobody. You know, you are just doing it for yourself. And that can be so freeing, you know, especially if you are an artist, you do that for a job. 
It can be just something that you do perhaps in a different medium. So maybe if you are a musician, you decide to paint a picture. You know, I'm a terrible painter, but I like painting because it really de-stresses me. It makes me think in a deeper, different way. And, and it's a creative exercise that makes me feel more creative in general. You know, it makes me, it reminds me, yes, I can do this, you know, um, which is very important in a time like this. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, this talk and you found some inspiration, some helpful strategies to build your resilience, maintain positivity, uh, manage your stress just a little bit better. Um, as you uh, work to change the things you can't change and, you know, let go of the rest. So stay safe and healthy as much as you can. And if you haven't uh, listened to my podcast, There To Be Seen, head on over there um, where I interview and talk uh, singer-songwriters about their journey of self-expression. You can also listen to new music. And there is going to be some bonus episodes about this kind of topics, about creativity and um, well-being as an artist. So all uh, for now and just tune in next Tuesday at, at 7 p.m. UK, 2 p.m. Eastern and uh, 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific. All for now. Bye-bye.